What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles because in this video we're going to solve systems of nonlinear equations. So I have three examples here on screen that I'm going to go through in this video. The video will be time stamped. So what I encourage you to do is pull out a pencil and paper, try some of this on your own. Math is not a spectator sport. To learn math you have to do math, so try it. Use this video to check your answers to clear up any kind of confusion or misconceptions and I hope this helps. Let's jump into the first example here. So first, since we're on our first example, I want to talk about what it even means to solve a system of equations. So algebraically, what it means is that we're looking for all the possible ordered pairs that satisfy both of these equations. So if I have some ordered pair and I can plug A in for X and B in for Y, and it makes both of these equations true statements, then that ordered pair is a solution. Sometimes we can have no solution, one solution, two, three, four, right? There's different numbers of solutions we could have. Graphically, we can also think about it graphically as all the points of intersection between these two graphs. Okay, so I'll actually pull up some graphs here in a second so we can sort of compare what we got through our algebraic work with the graphs of these different equations. So let's go ahead and start. Algebraically, we use substitution and elimination. And I like this first example because it's a clear example of substitution. Here we have y equals and y equals. It's begging for us to use substitution because what I can do is I can take this whole thing that is equal to y and I can plug it in for this y. And when I do that, what I have is x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals x plus 4. And now I have this nice quadratic that I can solve, and I always want to get 0 on one side, everything else on the other side, anytime I'm solving a quadratic, regardless of what method I'm using. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and I'm going to do two steps at once, and I believe you can handle this. I'm subtracting x and subtracting 4 from both sides. So on this right-hand side, I'll end up with 0, and on this left-hand side, I'll have x squared plus 2x minus 8. And hopefully this thing is factorable, so we don't have to bust out the quadratic formula. And I think it is. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to negative 8, but add together to positive 2. And I believe those numbers are positive 4 and negative 2. But let's double check that. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. 4 plus negative 2 is positive 2. We're good to go. And so we have two solutions from this quadratic equation here. We have x equals negative 4 and we have x equals 2. And what a really common thing students often do is they get to this and they circle their answers and they say they're done. But remember, solutions to systems are ordered pairs. We should have an x and a y for each solution. So I found two x values here. So for each of these x values, I want to find corresponding y values. So off to the side, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write x equals negative 4 and write a little colon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug negative 4 in for x and figure out what y is when x is equal to negative 4. I'm going to choose to plug it into this first equation, although either will work. This first equation looks a little bit easier. And so I'm going to plug in negative 4 for x, and I get y equals negative 4 plus 4, which simplifies to y equals 0. Now I have an actual solution. So off to the side here, I'll write solutions. And I'll start listing them out. We have our first one, which is negative 4, 0. I plugged in negative 4, I got 0. So again, this is a solution to this system, and graphically this should be a point of intersection of the graphs of these two functions. Now let's try our other x value, x equals 2. Let's plug in x equals 2 and see what the corresponding y value or values are. So in x equals 2, again, I'm going to use that first equation here, 2 plus 4, which is 6. Pretty easy maths here. So when I plug in 2, I get 6. This is another solution to this system of equations. So I have two solutions, negative 4, 0, and 2, 6. These are the two solutions, the only two solutions to the system. So graphically, they should be points of intersection. So let me pull up Desmos here, and we will confirm negative 4, 0, there's one solution, and 2, 6, there's the other solution. So again, we have a line, we have a parabola, the line intersects through it twice, and so the system has two solutions, and these are exactly the solutions that we just found using substitution. Awesome. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's move to our second example. Here, if you know anything about graphs, you can hopefully notice that the first equation, its graph is a circle. The radius is 4, and it's centered at the origin 
0, 0. The second graph looks like some form of quadratic. That's just something kind of to keep in mind. It's kind of cool to notice that. So another thing to point out is that we cannot cancel y's here, right? This is a y squared, this is a y. But we have this nice x squared, x squared, and we can easily cancel these using elimination, right? So what I'm going to do is take this second equation and multiply both sides of it by negative 1. That makes this x squared negative, it makes this 2y positive, and it makes this 8 negative. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, again, I want to get rid of the x squareds because then I'm going to be left with a y squared term, a y term, and a constant term, which is a quadratic. And I know how to solve quadratics, so that's a good thing. So x squared minus x squared is 0, and this is why sometimes elimination is also called the addition method, because literally we just add the left sides together, and we add the right sides together. So plus y squared plus 2y, these are not like terms, do not try to combine these, equals 16 minus 8, that's 8. Awesome. Now I can subtract 8 from both sides, and what a coincidence, I think I end up with the exact same quadratic that was in the last example. Is this the exact same? I remember 8 and 2. I think this is the exact same because we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to negative 8 and add together to 2. And those numbers are positive 4 and negative 2. So we just happen to have two examples where we end up with the same quadratic. And so we have two solutions to this quadratic. Our solutions are the numbers that make each factor equal to 0. So one of those is negative 4 and the other is positive 2. And again, we do not circle our answers. We have found the y values that correspond to solutions to our system here. And now we've got to find the corresponding x values for each of these y values. So I'm going to take negative 4 and I'm going to plug it in. I don't know if one equation is easier than the other. I think I'm just going to deal with the first one. So I have x squared plus negative 4 squared, and that equals 16. So let's square negative 4. That is positive 16, and that equals 16. And I think I already see that my solution is going to be 0, because what I'm going to end up here with is x squared equals 0, and the only number that I can square to get 0 is 0. So off to the side, I'll write solutions. And I'll go ahead and write my first solution, and this is where we have to be very careful, right? Because what I got from this is that x equals 0, y equals negative 4. So I have to make sure that I write it in that way, 0, negative 4, where I write 0 is the x value, negative 4 is the y value. It's often, uh, students often get that confused because we plugged in negative 4 and we got 0, so it sort of maybe feels like negative 4 should come first. Nope, make sure we pay attention to which variable is which. All right, let's try plugging in y equals 2 to get our other solution or solutions. So when I plug in y equals 2, what do I get? Well, again, I'm going to plug in just to the first equation here. Either of them will work just fine. I'm just choosing to deal with this first one. And I get x squared plus 4 equals 16. If I subtract 4 from both sides, I get x squared equals 12. And this is nice, I can use the square root method. Anytime I have x squared equals a number, I can square root both sides to find the solutions, but I cannot forget this plus or minus. This is so often forgotten. I get two solutions from this. So what I have here is that x equals plus or minus the square root of 12, which means from this y equals 2 value, I'm going to get two solutions. So I'm going to have three solutions total, right? One where the x value is positive root 12, one where it's negative root 12. So if you have a really nice teacher like me, I will absolutely allow you to keep this as square root of 12. But this could technically be simplified because if we do a prime factorization over here off to the side and draw a little tree, we can see that 12 can be broken down as 2 times 2 times 3. And this 2 times 2 can come out of the radical, right? Because the square root of 2 times 2 is just 2. And so that can come outside of the radical and the 3 stays in the radical. And so this is a way we can sort of simplify our answer. And again, what this gives us is two solutions when y equals 2. One where the x value is 2 square root of 3, and one where the x value is negative 2 square root of 3. Now, can you write this as in one set of parentheses and write plus or minus 2 root 3, 2? Absolutely. I like to expand them out just to make it clear that we have three solutions to this system.
All right, let's compare this with the two graphs back to Desmos. Let me deselect our first example here. So again, we have a circle, radius four, centered at the origin. This is some kind of parabola. Ooh, and it's a vertex is right on the circle. So that's where we're getting that one solution from of zero, negative four. And then the other two points of intersection should correspond to that negative two root three x value and that two root three x value. Hopefully if you punch those things in the calculator, you'll get exactly these as approximations. Awesome, let's move on to our last example now. And this example is a little bit tricky because what I see students often tempted to do is use substitution because it's like, oh, look, we have y equals this. We can plug that in for y. The reason why this is a little bit sketchy is because whatever we plug in for y ends up being squared. So let's suppose we did that. And this you absolutely can do. It's just tricky. We end up having to square this. And so we end up with something with x to the fourth, and that can be really tricky for students to factor. It's absolutely possible, you can do it, but a lot of times I see a lot of mistakes here made. So what I'd prefer to do is subtract x squared from both sides. So I'm gonna take the second equation, and I'm just gonna subtract x squared from both sides. So on the left-hand side, I get minus x squared plus y, and that equals negative four. And I prefer this because now I can do elimination, and I can add these together and get rid of the x squareds. The reason why I like this is because what am I left with? A y squared, a y, and a constant, right? Which is a quadratic that's really comfortable for me to factor and find the solutions of. So this is just my approach. You absolutely could do this and find the x values first. You just have to be careful with the algebra. So I'm gonna add these together. Again, I'm working with these two equations here because I took the second equation and I transformed it a little bit. I subtracted x squared from both sides. And so then what I have is x squared minus x squared is zero plus y squared plus y equals four minus four, which is zero. So I have y squared plus y equals zero, and I'm gonna factor out a y. I'm gonna factor out a y. If I factor out a y, I'm using the greatest common factor factoring method, right? These have a y in common. Now what I can clearly see are two solutions to this quadratic, one where y is zero, and one where y is negative one, right? I have these two factors multiplied together. I set each one equal to zero. I get zero and negative one. So again, two solutions for y here. And now let's go back and plug each of these in. So up, up here in the corner, I'm gonna write y equals zero. And I'm gonna figure out what are the solutions to this system that correspond to y equaling zero. I'm just gonna use this first equation, x squared plus zero squared equals four, which just gives me x squared equals four. And remember, when we square root both sides, we have to write that plus or minus. I see so many students just write, oh, wait, x equals two. But if we do that, we're missing out on one of the solutions, which is negative two. So here we get plus or minus two, which means we have two solutions when y equals zero. So off to the side here, let's write solutions. And so when x is positive two, y is zero, that's one solution. And then we have another solution, which is negative two, zero. And again, you could write plus or minus two, comma zero, totally fine, but I'm gonna list them all out like this. So, so far we have two solutions. Let's see how many we get when y equals negative one. Let's plug that in, when y equals negative one. All right, I'm gonna use the first equation again, x squared plus negative one squared equals four. And so I have x squared plus, let's see, negative one squared is positive one. Looks like I'm gonna end up with another irrational solution here, because I have x squared equals three. Three is not a perfect square, so when I square root both sides and do not forget the plus or minus, I end up with x equals plus or minus square root of three. So when y is negative one, I also have two possible values for x, positive root three and negative root three. So that gives us two more solutions. Root three, negative one, and negative root three, negative one. And so there are four total solutions to this system. And let's look at the graph and confirm that what we've done is correct. So back to Desmos. Here's our second example, that's going away. This is a circle with radius two centered at the origin. This is a parabola, ooh, okay. 
one, two, three, four. I see the two zero, negative two zero, and then hopefully if you punch in square root three in your calculator, you get approximately this, 1.732. Awesome. Hopefully this video helped. Hopefully this makes sense. If it did, leave a comment, like, subscribe, do all that stuff. Most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see y'all next time.